If you want to share the contents of one Mac screen with another, maybe for the purpose of tutorial style videos, or maybe to take the contents of that screen into, I don't know, a Discord voice channel, or maybe a Zoom call or something like that. There are a number of different ways that you can do that, but there are th just three that I use all of the time. And so I'm gonna cover those specific three in this video, and I'm gonna share the sort of pros and cons of each one and the different use cases that they all have. So let's start first though, with the built-in screen sharing that we've got in the Mac. Uh, and you can find this in the system preferences and specifically down here in the sharing options. Uh, and you want to be doing this by the way on, uh, let's call it the secondary Mac. So that's the one that you're gonna share the contents of uh, into the primary Mac, which is the one that you're working on, maybe creating your video or whatever it happens to be. Uh, so on the secondary Mac, just make sure that you do have this screen sharing checked. It might not be checked as a default, uh, but here also you may want to look at all these other different sharing options. So you can share files, media, uh, printers, and things like that that are connect to those devices as well, or those computers and basically share it between Macs that are connected to the same network. Assuming though that you have got screen sharing switched on, then if you come over into the Finder, then have a look in your uh, network section. Uh, so you can find this from the, uh, the menu in the Finder. You want to go to the Go menu, uh, and then you'll find network in there. But in any case, once you've done that, you'll see that there are different uh, computers attached, uh, and then just click on the one that you want. And you'll see if you've got screen sharing enabled, it will show you uh, screen share uh, as an option just there. Uh, if you're in a different view type, it might show up somewhere else. So let's go and have a look at list view. Um, yep, it's just up there at the top. But anyway, it should be there somewhere. So click on screen share. And what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna open up uh, an entirely new window, uh, which is if in effect a window onto that specific desktop. So let me just come in here, type in my password. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to just go into demo mode. You'll have to excuse this looking rather small at the moment. Um, let's just get rid of the finder and the system preferences. So now what you can see is up in the top left of the screen, uh, this is my just Ecamp running on my primary machine. It's what I'm using to record this video. But you can see here we've got this window, uh, which is a window into the desktop of that secondary computer. And one of the great things about using this method uh, for screen sharing is it's not just sharing the screen, but you also have the option up here for either just watching, basically observing the screen, or you can have control mode. Uh, when you are in control mode, uh, you've literally just then, I can just click into this window and you can see how now I can go and view all of these different menus and things like that. So this is all basically uh, just full control of this computer from my uh, primary computer. So I find this really useful for when I'm doing screen demos. So for example, if I was to bring up my Ecamm Live window, I've just hidden it down here. So this is Ecamm Live running on my secondary computer. So when I did my demos of the uh, Ecamm Live beta recently, this is how I was doing it because I needed to record using Ecamm, but I also wanted to show what Ecamm was looking like when it was neither recording or streaming. So this is how I did it. I set up a scene, which was uh, basically uh, just a scene as you're seeing there. Um, so the top one that you're looking at is Ecamm on the primary computer. Hoping this all makes sense, it should do. Um, and I've actually just got a camera overlay uh, just popped in there um, over this little blank area of the desktop from the uh, the, the window that I'm sharing. Uh, and of course, hopefully it should be quite obvious. All I'm doing there is if I just come into a little uh, blank scene here, all I did was I created an overlay uh, and then I shared my uh, window for some reason when I'm zoomed in. It doesn't show the little window properly. There we go. I uh, selected here screen sharing. So now it's just basically sharing that window and then I can crop in to the edge of that screen share window and then I can just drag this up. So now that's basically giving me a view. Um, it's actually, what it's actually giving me of, it, what it's actually giving me is, it's giving me a view of this screen sharing window, which in turn is giving me a view of what is on my desktop. Uh, and in fact, I just made that completely full screen for the purposes of this one. Uh, I've also done it slightly different as well before, where I wanted to show something that was on a, a different computer. And so I did it like this, so it was a bit more obvious. Uh, and there I've just got a bit, basically a picture of a laptop uh, and I've just literally positioned, uh, the screen is locked, the overlay is locked, one second. Uh, you can see I've just basically positioned that uh, where it needed to be in the uh, in the scene. So as I say, that's great for doing demos where you want to be able to show all of the interface, show everything that's going on. If I come out of demo mode, you can see how that really makes it seem like, uh, you know, I'm showing exactly what's going on on that uh, second computer. One of the drawbacks of this particular method though, if I come back into uh, my live demo mode, uh, is that you do have to have this open on the screen. 
Um, I like that because I actually don't have my laptop open. My laptop's just on a shelf actually plugged in and then whenever I need to use it, I just fire up the screen sharing and then it's ready to go. Uh, I don't need to have it you know, open on the desk or anything like that taking up any space. So for me, that works well because uh, I do need to be able to still control it. But if you don't want to uh, take up this space and maybe you've actually got the, the laptop open in front of you, you literally just want to share the desktop, uh, what you can do is you can use NDI on that uh, laptop instead. So let me just actually come and use this very scene that I've set up, come out of live demo mode. Uh, what I'm going to do is just move uh, Ecamm out of the way for a moment and I'm going to search for NDI. Uh, scan converter is the uh, application now it's just opened it's opened up at the top here it doesn't actually show anything on the screen as such it's just open in the dock uh, but here what you can do is from the capture menu that you've got at the top um, you can basically select um, what it is that you want to share so the default will be the desktop um, it's going to tr be transmitting the desktop or you can choose any other app and in fact any window of any of those apps uh, I've jumped ahead a little bit NDI is basically a, uh, a method for transmitting video it's a, uh, a video protocol <laughs> for transmitting video over a network uh, is the simplest way to put it um, so basically whatever I select in the um, in NDI here uh, in NDI uh, scan converter <laughs> by and blank there um, that will be basically just being transmitted over the network so what does that actually mean though and how does that look in real terms well if I come back into my demo mode here uh, and I'm just going to zoom in on Ecamm for the moment let me come back to this uh, demo scene that I created I'm going to get rid of this one this is the way that we just did it before uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a camera overlay now with a camera overlay, what we can do is we can select the cameras and anything that you transmit over NDI will appear as a camera. Uh, and all I'm going to do is if I just come into the settings, that's not going to show up as well zoomed in. It's a little bit weird how that is like that. Uh, let me just come into the settings. So instead of being the, um, uh, the camera, if I come in here, what you'll see is now we've got uh, the Alex MacBook Pro local and brackets scan converter. So if I click on that, that's now showing whatever we've got selected in Scan Converter. So because we selected our desktop, uh, this is just another way of bringing the entire desktop into Ecamm over, uh, over NDI. Now, the actual aspect ratio of that laptop is not actually 16 by 9. So what I would need to do is, uh, bear with me a second, <laughs> just change this aspect ratio to be uh, custom. And then if I make that the right size, there we go, that's the right size for that particular Mac and so there we go now I'm basically bringing in the desktop of that second Mac over NDI and what that means is I could then in theory just completely close this uh, because we're not using it we're bringing the uh, the feed in over NDI directly into that uh, secondary Mac so as I say if you've got that Mac open on your desk somewhere else uh, and can control it somewhere else then this is a great way to do that because it doesn't clutter up your primary uh, monitor there is another way though that we can do this. So what I'll do is uh, just come back into uh, my screen sharing because I will need to show you this. Um, and that is using Ecamm. So let me just come back over into the scene. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually open Ecamm or bring Ecamm up here. And the other way that we could do this is in Ecamm itself, if we go to the output, it has NDI built in. And what that does is it basically transmits whatever you've got running it or the output you've got from Ecamm and it transmits that over NDI. So all you need to do for that is go to output, uh, NDI output and make sure that it is switched on with one of these uh, sizes. So I've just gone with the maximum size there, 1080p. Um, and so assuming you've done that, uh, it is as simple as that. Then when you come into Ecamm, if I go back into that little test scene that we created uh, and I'll go into uh, live demo mode again, um, then if I click the little pencil, then instead of selecting the um, scan converter from here, there is another camera option, which is uh, Alex MacBook Pro Local Ecamm Live. And that is the NDI feed coming out of that MacBook Pro. And if I just put the uh, size back to 16 by 9, you can see, hopefully, that uh, what is coming out of here, if I just zoom in a little bit, what is coming into this window at the top here um, is actually just the feed from Ecamm on that secondary computer. So if I toggle on an overlay, 
uh, you'll see how it appears on the secondary computer as well. Uh, or for, sorry, appears on the primary from the secondary. So basically, whatever you've got coming out of Ecamm or showing in the Ecamm uh, preview window will appear then on that primary computer. Uh, the reason why this is useful is if you want to share specific applications or things like that, you may want to actually have them running on a second computer uh, and then just set up scenes in Ecamm to show each of those, you know, using the Ecamm's screen sharing in the second computer to share those different applications. And then you can do the switching on there uh, for when you want to uh, bring it into your, uh, your primary computer as a way to sort of offload some of that workload onto something else. Or maybe you've, as I said, before had you want to bring this into discord or something maybe you've got your discord running on a second computer uh, you're live streaming from your primary primary computer but you want your computer feed your, your uh, live stream feed to also be going into discord on that second computer you would just use the ndi on ecamm on the primary one that was streaming uh, and feed it into the ecamm on the second one and have that going into discord as a virtual camera or something like that so uh, these are just the uh, three different ways that i would uh, would do this obviously there is a drawback with this latter one that you do have to then have ecamm running on uh, both computers which might not uh, work out uh, entirely great for you you might not want to have that running um, but nevertheless it is just another option but i found with these three different options either the scan converter the built-in screen sharing or just using Ecamm uh, over NDI. Uh, it really does cover me for all the different kinds of tutorial style videos or screen sharing or things like that uh, that I need to do. So I hope that has been useful but what I'll do is I'll leave a link to uh, some more of my Ecamm videos over on the right hand side.